Uh, there was something that you mentioned during the pardon. You said about half took the deal and about half didn't. Okay. What would you say was one of the defining differences between those who took the pardon and those who rejected it? Uh, as someone who has studied pirates a great deal, I would say a love of haggis. <laughs> Uh, whatever could you mean by that? Uh, what I mean is, Blackbeard's ship was named the Queen Anne's Revenge. And that name had a very specific meaning to every English ship that he came across. Because he was? A Jacobite. He was a Jacobite. Yes! Uh, and, okay, guys. This is where I am going to uh, start arranging the dominoes. Uh, because we have uh, an actual sequence of events leading up to today's language. You guys ready for this? Because we're talking about the word guys. It has been fascinating within my own lifetime to see that start as uh, a term generally for a group of boys, informal usage. It is now becoming gender neutral, right? You can go up to a crowd of uh, mixed genders and say, hey, guys, and that is becoming a rather popular gender neutral term. Okay. Okay. Let's back it up because this is fascinating because this word came from one guy. His name was Guy Fox. Oh. Right? Remember, remember the 5th of November, the gunpowder treason and plot. I know of no reason why the gunpowder treason should ever be forgot. Okay. There is our first domino. Guy Fox. Uh, he was a Catholic uh, who was trying to blow up, he and his conspirators, Catholic conspirators, were trying to blow up essentially the entire British government. Uh, Which had, was Protestant at this time? It was Protestant at this time. Okay. And so they were going to try to blow up Parliament and try to get the king and his family at the same time. One fell swoop. Okay. Ooh, okay. Ambitious. Okay. And so after that, they would have celebrations where they would dress up effigies of Guy Fox and burn them. Uh, you like, you oh, mean this... after the after the the gunpowder? Yes. Thing after, failed. after that failed, they found him holding the match essentially, uh, and of course he is executed and whatnot. Uh, but then they have mm -hmm. this celebration, which goes on to today. I have celebrated Guy Fox Day on the 5th of November and burned an effigy of Guy Fox, But apparently it became a common have. insult. Uh, I have British friends. Uh, hi, Fiona, if you're watching. Uh, <laughs> but uh, it became a common thing to have these things be ugly, right? These, these, these dressed up guys were ugly and, and hideous. And so it started as an insult, right? Look at that guy over there. Right? Hey, check out those guys. And so it was Hurtful. first an insult for slovenly ugly men. And then it just became men. And now that word has come all the way to modern times as a gender neutral friendly greeting to all. I love language. It is so much fun. But that's just the first one. That's, oh, that's the first domino. Right, that's the first domino. I assumed you had just forgotten to keep setting them up. Okay. No, no, no. <laughs> okay, I'm on board. I, I, just, I could not resist the allure of how we got the word guys. Guys. Bonus, he would not have called himself guy. He probably went by Guido or Guido. Just oh. saying. <laughs> So it's not even the right word. Other people call him guy. Guido or Guido? Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
Okay, Guidos. <laughs> well, let's talk let's about continue. the king. Okay. Okay. Which this? king? Exactly. Uh -oh. Exactly which king? King James the first or sixth. Depending on which country you were from. If you were from Scotland, this was James the sixth. You've already had five kings, Jameses. Okay, but this James lives long enough to have his cousin Elizabeth die, uh, and he assumes the English throne. Right. And becomes the first monarch, essentially, to be over both countries of Scotland and England. Uh, for you Shakespeare fans out there, this is the fulfillment of the witch's prophecy in the bloody scottish play macbeth oh yes by the way one of the reasons that was in here james king james our second domino way into witches yes uh, <laughs> and um uh, concomitant with william shakespeare yes uh if anything uh his reign was something of a golden age for english literature he would he would patronize a lot of the uh the great artists and authors and writers and playwrights of that time, including Shakespeare. Yeah. Um, Sam Bellamy was in love with a witch. Just quick side note. Moving on. All right. Well, we'll just leave that there and circle back to it. Uh, <laughs> we can. Um, James is... It, it, it's hard to say because in my mind, he was a good king. Okay. He tried his best. Oh, among his literary projects sponsored the translation of the Bible. The King James. The King James Bible. It was that James. James okay. the first or sixth, depending on how many James you'd, Jameses you'd had up to that point. Um, so, but he is Scottish. Yes. And he is also a peacemaker. Okay. Mm -hmm. People generally don't like this. Right? They like going to war with France. They like going to war with Spain. And they love, they love killing Catholics. Right? Yeah. That was a thing at the time. See those Captain Catholics. Captain Morgan. Yes. Um, James wasn't about that. Um, even after the gunpowder plot, he did absolutely. Like, people say, oh, there were these really harsh penalties brought down upon the Catholics after the gunpowder plot. But worth noting, as harsh as they were, they were nothing compared to what the people were calling for. Mm. James was a moderate, and everybody hates a moderate. Uh, okay. <laughs> but he is... Uh, he, he's, he's generally a good king. Oh, okay. by the way, I had to... Uh, look a long time to figure out why the Jacobite religion was called the Jacobite religion. Or, religion? Not, re, re, not, not religion. Rebellion. Rebellion okay. and religion. They're close, but not the same. I am back on board. Okay. Uh, How do you say James in Latin? Uh, Chiago or some variant thereof. Try Jacobus. Jac Jacobus? Heck yeah! James become okay. James becomes Jacobus, and his reign was referred to as the Jacobean era. And the people who were just so gung ho were the Jacobites. These so it were did, it, so it, it just means just means James. Just means James, right? But yeah, the the Jamesites. The the Jamesites doesn't have a, doesn't have a ring to it. Okay, it yeah. From a branding perspective, it makes sense now. But he dies having done his bit. Um, there is one other thing he puts into play, though. He writes an entire book, he was a writer himself, on the divine right of kings. I am king because God wants me to be king. Okay. And this leads him to conflict with Parliament. Can't imagine because why. Because if Parliament says one thing and the king and God say something else, well, 
you're outvoted parliament and go away. And he often just told them to go away. And he pulled it off because he was a peacemaker, actually managed to have low taxes because of the no whole no war thing or very little war. I mean, yeah, some war. Got to have some uh, war. Some war. A little bit of war, but much less war. Um, but yeah, he generally pulls it off. Um, then we have his son, Charles I. Okay. Also believes in the divine right of kings, mm. but not quite the pacifist his father is. He gets together with a guy, Buckingham. I don't think that was his real name. I think it was part of his title, but everybody calls him Buckingham. Um, and they say, let's go fight the Spanish. And they get their butts kicked. Let's go fight the French. And they get their butts kicked. And all of a sudden... Somebody saying, I have divine right to be king and starts pushing parliament around isn't very popular. It goes to war. Oliver Cromwell, some of you might recognize that name, uh, leads the armies of the parliament. And Charles leads his, Charles I, uh, leads his armies and Charles dies. Uh, Oliver Cromwell then proceeds to essentially rule as dictator. Uh, Parliament did not then get a nice democratic uh, situation. They got Oliver Cromwell instead. Quick side note. Cromwell sends an invasion force to the New World to try to take the island of Hispaniola, fails, and instead takes Jamaica. Boom. Don't you see how it all comes together? Isn't it fun? Anyway. Oh, and one of the people that he sends is Captain Morgan. There you Captain go. Captain Morgan uh, was a young man as part of that expedition. Okay. Okay. So, uh, they put up with Cromwell for about, I don't know, nine, ten years. Right. Right? At which point, Parliament goes to Charles, son of Charles. Right? Okay. The beheaded guy. His son would be his heir. He leaves the country because of what, you know, the beheading and whatnot. Charles Charleston. Got it. Charles Charleston. Uh but Cromwell uh, dies, and Good. Parliament is like, hey, Charlie boy, uh, we, we may have been a little bit hasty. Why don't you come back and be king again? And Charles II is like, cool. So he comes back. Um, uh, he is the Merry Monarch, okay? Lots awesome. of parties at the palace, a uh, little bit of, uh, of diplomacy, right? Has a little bit of granddad's pacifism uh, and promises the French to convert to, com to Catholicism to strengthen that, that treaty. Convert to Catholicism. Convert to Catholicism. Okay. So he's, he, so, so Charles II is Catholic? No, Charles II is Protestant, like most of the rest of his country and the, the nobles and everything. Right, right, right. But in a deal with France, comes up with, to sweeten the deal, I'll convert to Catholicism. Oh, I thought you said France was going to convert to Catholicism. No, I was very France, confused. France was already way Catholic. Charles is going to convert to Catholicism. Yes. Wow. Okay. Yes. The um, plot thickens. Uh, doesn't get the chance. He dies. Oh. He has fathered lots of children. I think a good even dozen. Oh. No legitimate heirs. Oopsie. Not a one. Uh, and so it goes to James II, who is already... Catholic. And now, after all this Guy Fox stuff, all this anti-Catholic sentiment, they've been warring uh, with Spain, with France, which were both Catholic countries. In the case of Spain, incredibly Catholic. Just yes. aggressively Catholic. Uh, <laughs> like, they, pull your eyes out, Captain. <laughs> they're, they're, they're way Catholic. <laughs> they're, they're serious about it. They are devout. Um and now, all of a sudden, Britain has a Catholic king and a devout Catholic king. He's serious about it. And 
so the British kind of like hold their breath for a little bit, just thinking, okay, we, we can outlast this. And then he has a son bringing up the idea of a Catholic dynasty in yeah. England. And they say, no. Uh, now, there were some other things. Obviously, uh, we're, we're oversimplifying a little bit, but essentially we end up with this uh, can't do it anymore. He's trying to press his Catholic agenda. They are pressing back just as hard with their Anglican agenda. Comes to the glorious revolution of 1688, to put it back on your timeline. Okay. okay. And he is kicked out. At that point, you have a division, uh, and this is the key thing. You have Parliament that then installs their own king and asserts monarchy comes from Parliament. Right. And then you have these Jacobites who say monarchy comes from God. Right. Okay. And so this becomes a gathering place. For people who are upset with the British, uh, Catholics, uh, anyone who's ever been abused by the British, which is quite a lot of the Scots. <laughs> most of the world at this Mo point. Most of the world at this point. Especially the Scots. Uh, but yes, you, you absolutely have, have the Scots um, who backed this line. This was a Scottish line. Ironically... Probably shouldn't have. The Stuarts actually weren't all that good to Scotland. In fact, there were a couple of those in there that just outright neglected or abused the Scottish nobles. So, uh, you know, uh, they, you get lost in the details, but there's still ideas of like this was one of ours, right? And right. they got they got kicked out for no reason, and now we want it back. Yes, right. And so we, yes. we start this whole thing. I think you put a bat best hashtag not my king yeah uh, and so you have these pirates which would have been right right mm -hmm. around that time who would not have recognized the english king as king he was the usurper yes the the parliamentary puppet and so yes not a real king not ordained by god and so who what was needs the family his name pardon they were the stewards it was the Stuart line no, the the that that replaced the new the new kings. I believe after that you had the Hanoverian. The Hanoverians. Yeah. Uh was kind of the dynasty after that. So, yeah, a lot of the pirates uh including Blackbeard, Charles Vane, uh Jack Rackham, uh Bartholomew Roberts, I believe, were all Jacobites. So, when the pardon comes down, and they are offered a pardon from the king. Their response was, hashtag not my king. <laughs> Absolutely not. We will fight you to our final breath. Benjamin, what's the knife for? Uh, <laughs> Benjamin Hornigold Benjamin took, Hornigold the, uh, took the, the pardon, pardon and, and killed. Became a friend. pirate hunter. Good one. Yeah. Real good one. Yeah. Uh, 